I've been working on this hexagon LED project for a while, which as well as making pretty patterns serves as a family tracker. My son has got to the age where he no longer needs wraparound care and does not want to be slumming it with the much younger kids at the after school club. As such, he is often the first to arrive home. For his birthday we gave him a key and a phone so he can contact us if he needs to. And with this tracker mounted on the wall showing him how far away everyone is, he is now a proper Generation Alpha latchkey kid. There are other solutions for this problem, like AirTags and family location sharing apps for Apple and Android too, though there is something about these I find a little creepy, and like anything smartphone or app related, there are always unconscious addictive dopamine fixing habits to be aware of with every screen unlock. I do think my own generation's neurotic fixation with tracking is alarming. But as a family, we are in this sweet spot where my son is reassured knowing he is tracked and able to see where we all are. With this light up display, I figured at least our personal brand of neuroticism would be aesthetic and fun. I've built my fair share of LED gadgets, including a tea please beacon that signals when I'm almost home. But relying on third party services like if this then that always felt a bit like building on rented land. For this project, I wanted to own the entire process. The solution was to go local. I set up a Raspberry Pi as my very own MQTT broker and took the plunge into Node Red to orchestrate it all. Each family member's phone runs own tracks, which regularly publishes their location. Node Red processes this data, then publishes information about which lights to activate. A Raspberry Pi Pico subscribes to this information and updates the display accordingly. This setup allows the Pico to react to location changes. If you're interested in a more in-depth technical overview of how this technology communicates, please refer to the article linked in the comments. I used WS2812 LED strips for the lighting, designing the model so each triangle would contain two LEDs. I crafted circles on 5mm foam board using a compass, each containing six triangles of the correct size. After some cutting and assembly, I had a large hexagon made of 150 triangles. Though the LED strips run vertically and horizontally, I mapped the individual LED numbers to their positions within the hexagon. This allowed me to program the LEDs to display a concentric hexagonal lighting sequence, prioritising that over the physical strip layout. For the light diffusers, I used a 5 metre roll of Luchador fabric. Each pyramid was cut from a trapezium shape using a cry cut machine, leaving the bottom open for the LEDs. I sewed the pyramid edges, and an initial test showed good light diffusion. While I began sewing the 150 triangles into groups of six, I eventually stapled these hexagons together due to time constraints. Given that my free time comes in five minute bursts, this whole process took months. The initial results look great, including a rainbow animation that interestingly also reveals the LED's original straight line arrangement. My first test with the pyramids directly over the LEDs looked promising, However, after further testing, I decided to add depth by inserting dividers into the foam board. This significantly improved light diffusion, which was clear even when I simply placed A4 paper over the LEDs. The model really started to take shape once it was embedded in a wooden frame. I clumsily cut and glued this frame together with a little help from a mitosaur set to very nearly 30 degrees. Initially, the light sequences were simply experiments to see what effects I could create. The Raspberry Pi Pico, which controls the lights, runs CircuitPython and uses the NeoPixel library for these sequences. You can find more details about the code for the light sequences in the links provided in the description. The toughest part of this project was mapping real-world geographical locations to positions within my hexagonal frame. To tackle this, I turned to Folium, a Python library typically used for creating maps. After diving into its documentation and experimenting, I wrote a Python script which could draw triangles over a map. 
but more importantly, it defined a triangle class and generated a list of 150 triangles, each with its own vertices and center points. Ultimately, I could create this entire map and the resulting list by simply inputting a single longitude and latitude coordinate. From there, by selecting the desired depth, meaning the number of concentric hexagons and the miles per degree longitude, for my region, here in Gloucestershire, UK, one degree of longitude is about 45 miles. And along with the desired side length of the triangles in miles, I could generate a list of triangles that perfectly matched my pyramid model. I played around with these values until I had a map that would allow my model to represent an area large enough to include my hometown of Sirencester along with both of our workplaces in nearby towns. At the heart of this operation is a Raspberry Pi Model 5 running Node-RED to handle all the thinking. Think of Node-RED as a visual switchboard for nerds. Instead of writing dense code, you connect blocks to create a flow. When the Pi powers on, Node-RED gets to work. It loads the essential data about the triangles and simultaneously starts listening for location pings from each phone. Each phone has the own tracks app quietly running in the background. It's a nifty open source tool that periodically sends out its location using the MQTT protocol, a lightweight messaging system perfect for this kind of digital Marco Polo. A huge plus is that all of this location data is kept private and isn't sold off to the highest bidder, a rare treat in this day and age. To prevent the system from having a meltdown, Node-RED politely throttles the updates going to the Pico to no more than one per minute. The real number crunching happens in a Node-RED function. It takes the phone's location, figures out who it belongs to and determines which LEDs need to change. This involves calculating the distance between two points on a sphere, a surprisingly tricky bit of geometry. This is where AI came in handy, offering up the elegant Haversign function, a far cry from the clumsy mess I would have cobbled together myself. This function then sends the absolute minimum information required for the Pico to do its job. Interestingly, while AI was a genius at complex maths, it fell flat when coding the Pico. The elegant AI-generated code was a pain to understand, in the end, my own beautifully clumsy and repetitive code was much clearer and won the day. It just goes to show sometimes clarity is king, even if it means repeating yourself. I couldn't be happier with how this project turned out. We now have this subtle ambient tracker on the wall. An invasion of privacy? Absolutely, but it also gives whoever is at home an instant sense of where the family is, all without anyone having to get lost in their phone. What's funny is that while the system can pull off some seriously jazzy 300 LED animations, I find myself preferring the understated effect. There's a certain elegance to watching a single light gently pulse and shift between the colours of the people in that location. We have a simple colour code. I'm red, my wife is green and our son is blue. But the best party trick is when we are all home. The individual colours merge and a central pyramid glows a clean, bright white. It's the perfect, minimalist signal that the whole team is back at base. For a closer look at the code and all the links I've mentioned, head down to the description and consider subscribing if this particular brand of aesthetic neuroticism is your sort of thing.